We're so glad you're here. It's Mother's Day, and all the most important lessons that I learned about life, I learned from my mom. So thank you, Mom. Interesting enough, during all of that training and during all of those lessons, she was emphasized each of those lessons with a phrase that said something like this, you'll thank me someday. (laughs) Heard that a few times just this week. (laughs) So today I want to share with you one of the most important lessons I believe we need right now. I look around and I see people that are absolutely exhausted. I see a people, I see a culture, a society that is tired, that is throwing its hands up, canceling, quitting, having enough. This comes out of my heart for us this morning, for my family, for your family, for our church family. This comes out of conversations and counseling that we've had with people, individuals, young adults, students. That's why our youth are in the room this morning. Young and old, everyone just seems to have had enough to be in this sort of constant overwhelm, feeling, having the sense of having to do more with less all the time. And I'm here to tell you, I think it's affected our witness. I think it's affecting the church and the body of Christ for the body to be this tired and this exhausted. And I've seen the solution, unfortunately. The solutions that we've attempted is to do less. And the first thing we tend to do less of is engage. The thing that we're made for. We pull back from community and we pull back from church. And inevitably we end up pulling back from God. I don't think that's an adequate solution. But I do believe there is an adequate solution in Scripture. And I believe God wants to speak to us, new song, about this today. So I thought about preaching a message on the nine commandments. Since there's one that we seem to refuse to keep. But the Holy Spirit said to me this week, that's the trouble. So instead of preaching on the nine that we all agree on, I'm going to preach on the one we seem to reject. And I will remind us that there is a principle behind each commandment that will enhance our relationship with God and with others that enhances our relationship with one another. But this morning, on Mother's Day, we are going to look at the principle of rest which is the fourth commandment. And I believe the solution to our problem of being tired and overwhelmed. Exodus 20, verse 8. If you have your Bibles, you can open it up or you can follow along on the screen. We'll put these verses up for you. Exodus 20, verse 8 says, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy or keep it set apart or keep it separate From the other days, from the other six days, keep it separate. Six days you shall email and text. That's just bringing it up to modern language, okay? Email and text and labor and do your posting and scrolling and your your work. Okay, just trying to make it relevant. All your work, notice. Notice the word all. I've discovered that in the Hebrew, the word all, uh, the, the, in, in the Greek, the word all, in, in every ang- language in the world, the word all means all. Good. Scholars in the room this morning. All your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do how much work? Any work, you, your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your livestock, or the sojourner, that's the stranger that is with you, that is within your gates. Everybody say four. Four. In other words, here's the reason. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. 
the Lord rested. He blessed this day, the seventh day, the Sabbath, and he made it holy. He called it holy. He set it apart, made it separate. Yes? That's what the Word of God says. Yes? So we don't keep the Ten Commandments or even this one that we're going to talk about today. We don't keep these commandments to be saved. We're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But there are blessings. Everybody say blessings. There are blessings if we keep this commandment, the fourth commandment. And by the way, there are consequences. I won't ask you to say amen right there. But there are consequences if we don't keep it. But here's what's so amazing to me about this commandment. It seems like that believers today, we, we think that we should only keep nine of the ten commandments. But we don't think we should keep this one. We don't need to keep this one. I want you to think about it. We believe that we should not have any other gods before him. We believe that we should not have idols. We would believe together that we would not uh, take his name in vain. Skip number four. We believe that we should honor our mother and father. Happy Mother's Day, moms. We believe we should not lie, that we should not steal, not murder, not commit adultery. We believe we should not covet. Everyone agree with all of those? Everyone agree with all of those? Hoping you all agree with the murder one. (laughs) So why do we think, why is it that we think we don't need to keep this one? Why is it that we don't think we need to keep this one? Well, I think we should. And I think... Like my mom always says, you'll thank me later. I'll give you some reasons why, some reasons why this is a principle for us that that we need to rest. Because that's what it is. It's a principle of rest. It's a promised rest, okay? And so here's number one. There are reasons. Number one is there are reasons God said to rest. There are reasons. And I'm going to have two sub points under this point and then have two more points, all right? So that's still three points, and I'll get you out of here on time. Here's the first reason it gives God the opportunity to provide for us supernaturally. This is the first of the reasons. Why God says we need to rest. It gives God the opportunity to provide for us supernaturally. It gives God the opportunity. When we don't work seven days a week to provide for us supernaturally. If you flip back or just follow along in Exodus chapter 16, this is where God provided manna, that sweet provision, that sweet supernatural, you've heard of superfood? This was supernatural food, right? Honey bread, something like that. Just that God provided supernaturally for his people in the wilderness. And if we pick it up in verse 23, it says, he, Moses, provided uh, or said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded. So Moses is relaying to the people what the Lord has said to him. He's the messenger, and he's passing along the message. Tomorrow is, uh, is a day of solemn, what? Rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil. And all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till morning as Moses commanded them, and it did not stink, and there were no worms in it have to pause right there for a minute. If you don't know the story or have read the scripture before, you're saying that sounds like a good thing, but I feel like I'm missing something. So let me show you. Let me uh, share this with you. If you remember, some of you remember, some of you I'll explain to you. They, they had, uh, when they had started um, having the, the manna, he said, only gather um, what you need for one day. This was the instructions from the Lord as God was providing for them supernaturally. But then the people didn't believe they were worried. Anybody worried? You don't have to raise your hand. Anybody anxious? You don't have to raise your hand. Anybody have concerns? You don't have to raise your hand. But they were 
worried that it wouldn't be there the next day. They didn't believe it. They didn't trust it. So they, do you remember what they did? They kept more than they needed for that day. But what they kept, the part that they kept that was more than what they needed, it began to stink the next day, and they found worms in it. Listen, they weren't trusting God for the provision. And here he said, on the sixth day, gather it in, on the sixth day, gather it in enough for two days, and then the next day it didn't stink and it didn't have any worms. See, God did something. God did something supernatural in the way that he provided a provision for them, for his people, in that moment of rest, in that day of rest. Look at verse 25. Then Moses said, eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today, watch, you will not find any in the field Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, watch this, there will be what? None. Now on the seventh day, some of the people went out to email and post and text and gather, but they found none. No provision from God for working on that day. You with me? Verse 28. And then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you, a gift is given. God has given you a gift in the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. Verse 29. So the people rested on the seventh day. Verse 30. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now, this is, we're reading from, I'm reading from Exodus this morning. Exodus chapter 20. But remember the Ten Commandments are also found in Deuteronomy chapter 5. Exodus, here in Exodus, uh, the word of God uses the word remember. Uh, Deuteronomy 5 uses the word observe. So the Jewish people, God's people, remember and observe the Sabbath day. But in Deuteronomy chapter 5, he adds something. He says, you don't need to work on this day because you used to be slaves, but I have redeemed you. Let me see if I can explain something to us. Slaves don't get a day off. Only the royalty and only um, the wealthy and only the elite get days off. Okay? We are, you are, I am children of the king. The king of kings and lord of lords. He's saying to Israel, he's saying to, his, he's saying to you and me, you didn't get a day off when you were in bondage. Understand? Think about this. During the week, we're all slaves. We're slave to schedules. We're slave to commitments. We're slave to appointments. We're slave to provisions. We're slave to our phones. We're slave to our work. But God says, one day a week, you're free. I'm giving you a gift. Work six days. On the seventh day, rest. It's a gift of rest. It's a principle. You're free. You don't have to work. Listen to this. I'll provide for you. I'll take care of you. And I mean, this is all through Scripture. And what God is saying is I'm trying to give you a day off. This is like tithing to me. Some of you understand the principle of of first fruits and and giving a tithe. Now, for me, I just know that 90% goes farther with the blessing of God than 100% without the blessing of God. Are you with me? Listen, you will do more in six days with the promise and the blessing of God than you will in seven days without the blessing and without the promise of God. 
Amen? I mean, if, if you want to know how much he can do, how much God can do in six days, just look around you. The display that we've seen in our skies the last couple nights, the, the creation, all that we're seeing this time of year with spring and the grass and the blooms, the flowers and the trees and everything that we see. Just look around you. In six days, God created the universe. He created the galaxies, everything we see. And by the way, everything that we don't see, God did in six days. He can do it. He can do it. So first, um, it gives God an opportunity to provide for us supernaturally. The second reason, under point one here, is it gives us the opportunity to rest and be refreshed. So it gives God an opportunity to provide for us naturally, but also there's this reason that it gives us the opportunity to rest and be refreshed. I love this. I love that God has given us this gift where we can rest and be refreshed. Look at Exodus 31, picking it up in verse 14. You shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you. It is set apart for you. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. This is a serious conversation. Whoever does any work on it, the soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Remember, we've been grafted in to the nation of Israel. Observing the Sabbath throughout the generations. Listen, as a perpetual covenant, your translation might say. How long is perpetual? That's right, forever. And look what it says. As a covenant, forever. And here it comes, don't miss it. It will be a sign. It will be a what? It will be a sign between me, God, and God's people forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he, God, what? rested and was what? Refreshed. Boom. <laughs> Mic drop. And it's important for us to understand. I thought this message this morning on Mother's Day of all days. If anyone ought to be exhausted, it ought to be our mothers. More of asked of you than anyone else. And I've heard it done. I've never done it. But moms roll into church on Mother's Day and we say, here's how to be the perfect mom. You exhausted moms, just roll out Proverbs 31, the perfect woman. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to extend to you and extend to you men, and extend to you youth, and students, college, career, old, young, wherever you are in your life, that God has given us a gift of rest. And his solution is better than our solution. It's important for us to understand, too, the Sabbath is a sign. We just read that, right? A sign. It was, a sign. It was the greatest sign to the then known world. So it's a, it's a sign. God says it's a sign, so it's a sign. And it was a way that um, Israel, before this, Israel was the only nation um, that had a rest, that rested like this one day a week. And what they would do back then is when they were doing business or handling business with other people and other um, nations, um, just again to bring this into modern language, modern terms, they would you know, email Israel or there would be a Zoom conference or something and they would say, you know, we're going to be in town on Saturday traveling through and, and we'd like to meet, we'd like to get together and finalize the contract and get signatures on the contract. But then, in, in, then Israel would email them back and say, oh, you know what, um, we don't do meetings on the seventh day. We can't meet you um, to, to, to finalize the contract. And, and then they would, the other nation would, e the other people would email back again and say, oh, that's okay, that's inconvenient because we're traveling by camel and we're going to be there right around that time. And it's, you know, we've got it all worked out and um, we don't know if there's any room in the ends. So they would reply, but... Um, 
that's the day that we rest. And they would ask, well, rest, what is that? Why do you rest on the seventh day? Well, that, that God rested after creating the world in six days and rested and gave us a, a gift of rest on the seventh day. And they would email back, God who? Who is your God? <laughs> Are you following me? And so this would be a great witness. It would be a sign. It was a way to share their faith, their rest. I wonder if in our exhaustion, we've not been a great witness or provide a great sign of who God is and what God can do. I think one of the best examples, I think one of the best chicken sandwiches is Chick-fil-A. And, and I think that, that one of the best examples is the corporation that is Chick-fil-A and the Chick-fil-A Foundation, founded by Truett Cathy. And they have, from their beginning, worked six days a week and taken one day off. Even as I mentioned Chick-fil-A, I want to head there right after church today for Mother's Day and have Chick-fil-A. Closed on Sundays. No Chick-fil-A, all right? Because... They work six days and rest on the seventh. What's amazing about God's economy is even this counterintuitive, sort of highly productive and exhausted culture that we live in, the practice of a day of rest is so uh, foreign to us. But by carving out a day, a Sabbath, a holy day, a day set apart, what we're saying to God is this. I'm going to work hard for six days. I'm going to steward well what you give me and what you put in my hand. And then I'm going to trust you with my rest. It's admitting that God is God and that we are not. And that he can provide, he can produce more in six days than we can in seven. Interesting enough, Chick-fil-A has maintained consistently more gross sales per uh, location than any other fast food chain. And they're only open six days a week. They do better in six days than any McDonald's, any Wendy's, any Burger King, or any Taco Bell do in seven days. Think about that for a minute. More important than the warnings against not taking the Sabbath, the Bible, the Word of God outlines so many blessings that we receive when we follow Him into this rest. See, God worked six days and then rested on the seventh day. And it's a sign that we, as believers, don't need to work seven days a week. God has modeled this for us, and it's a sign about what God did. It's a sign about what God does. And all through Scripture, we find this as a sign. Now, there's a word here that I want to explain to us before we move on. And it says that God rested. He rested and was, what was the word? Does anybody remember? Refreshed. Refreshed. Now, I'll be honest. That's a tough one for theologians. That's a tough one to understand or explain that God was refreshed. That an omnipotent, all-powerful God provided for himself a moment of refreshing. But I want you to think about it. For the God who never gets tired... For the God that never sleep. He says, I never get tired, that I never sleep. How could a God need rest and need to be refreshed? Well, we always try to go back to the original language. And in the Hebrew, this word refreshed means, you ready for it? Took breath. Or, think about it this way, God breathed in. What had God been doing for six days? He'd been creating, right? For six days. How does God create? He speaks. What do you do when you speak? You breathe out. Let there be. He breathed into man. And the word of God says that man became a living soul. 
You remember this, some of you? So listen, for six days, God had been breathing out. And on the seventh day, God breathed in. And he was refreshed. So my question for you is, if God refreshes himself, why don't you? Why don't we? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with resting one day a week? So number one, there are reasons God said to rest. Here's number two. There are consequences when we don't rest. There are consequences when we don't rest. Let's look at Numbers 15, verse 32. It says, while the people of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man. Notice what they found this man doing. This man was gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. What was he doing? Gathering sticks, sticks, okay? Not stealing, not committing adultery, not murdering someone, gathering sticks. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. Now, this is funny to me. Verse 34, they put him in custody. Stick guy. Your translation may say they put him under guard because it had not been made clear what should be done to him. I mean, of course they put him under guard. He was a stick gatherer. What's next? And the Lord said to Moses, the man shall be, and the Lord said, notice who's speaking. The Lord said, the man shall be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him to death with stones as the Lord commanded. I mean, that, it may just be mean, but that seems pretty severe for gathering sticks. And the Lord said it. So this this is important, everybody. This is serious. And there are, there are four, by the way, there are four things that we find in Scripture that required death or, or required, that brought the death penalty um, in the Old Testament. It's murder, um, adultery, rebellious children. So tell your kids. <laughs> no. no. Just tell them, listen, if we lived in the Old Testament, you'd be dead, buddy. Uh, murder adultery, a rebellious spirit, and not keeping the Sabbath. So, why would not keeping the Sabbath be up there with murder and adultery and continued rebellion? We have to remember that there's a principle or there's a promise behind each commandment, including this one, the fourth commandment. So let me just ask you this. Are you putting yourself to death by not resting one day a week? Let me put it this way. Are you killing yourself? Oh man, there's so much on this and researched so much and read so much. And there's actually, in, in some cultures... Um, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but there's culture, there's, they have new language, new words in their vocabulary, in their dictionary for what it means to work yourself to death. Just in the last decade. There are consequences, remember? Second Chronicles 36, 20 says, um, and this is when the Israelites were taken out. This is so important, so stick with me. Um, we're almost there. When they were taken out of the land for 70 years. I'm going to read it to you. It says, he took into exile. Second Chronicles 36, verse 20. He took into exile in Babylon those who had escaped from the sword. And they became servants to him and to his sons until the establishment of the king of per- kingdom of Persia. Verse 21. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah. Watch this. It's interesting. Until the land had enjoyed its Sabbath. I didn't even know the land needed a Sabbath. 
until the land had enjoyed its Sabbaths. All the days that it lay desolate, it kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. Okay, so what happened here is and the first time I saw this, it, it, really, it really changed my life. That, that every seventh year, they were supposed to let the land rest every seventh year, but they had stopped doing that. The nation of Israel had stopped doing that. They stopped letting the land rest as they were supposed to. So seven years went by, and they plowed the land. Seven years went by, they planted the land. In heaven, apparently, God has a big whiteboard, and he keeps track of these things. And so when seven years had gone by, he made a mark. And then when 14 years, another one. Uh, 21 years, third mark. All right, 28, four, 35, five marks, okay? So for 70 years, 70 Sabbaths, they do this. But they did it more than 70 years because it was every seven years. So if you're mathematical, and I know some of you um, are, and I, I talked to somebody who was, so I hope I got this right. Um, they went 490 years not letting the land rest. So think about it. If you had been getting away with something, if you had been doing something for 490 years, wouldn't you think you were getting away with it? Yes, of course you would. I would too. But you don't get away with it. There are consequences. And God took his children out of the land. And they were slaved for 70 years so that the land could enjoy its Sabbaths. So it could get, so it could have its Sabbaths. Now, if God is concerned about the land, how much more do you think he's concerned about you? There are consequences. And some of you are more stressed and more anxious and more overwhelmed than you should be because you won't receive this gift, this gift of God. God has given us a gift. It's a day off. It's not a bad gift. <laughs> it's a good gift. Now here's the third thing, third principle of rest. There are blessings when you rest. There are blessings when you rest. There are blessings. There are blessings. There are blessings when you rest. I want to show you a principle here. Mark chapter 2, verse 23. Uh, one Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples began breaking off heads of grain to eat. And the Pharisees were saying, look, why they are, um, are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Jesus did have, you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry. Um, he and those who were with him, um, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man. There's the gift. Not man for the Sabbath. This is Jesus speaking. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And so why did I read this to you before we finished up today? Because I wanted to show you that this isn't legalistic with God. Okay? There is Jesus. And he's saying, listen. We didn't make man for the Sabbath. We didn't make you to serve the Sabbath. We made the Sabbath to serve you. Understand? Do you realize that God could have had a six-day week? He's the one that came, God is the one that came up with the seven-day week. And he included one day as a day of rest. I mean, he could have worked six days and just started over again and kept going again. But he didn't. The Sabbath is a gift to you. It's a gift to you. There's an old Jewish saying that I love. It says, more than Israel has kept the Shabbat, Shabbat has kept Israel. Just resting one day a week. Now, Sabbath is on Saturday. But again, I believe it's a principle. It's, it's a promise. And it might not be the same day for you that is the end of your week, that is your day of rest. For me, you may know this or you may not know this, but I work on Saturdays. 
That's not a great day to rest for me. So praise God, there's another day. And for me, that day is Mondays. The number one question I get about my day of rest, about my Sabbath on Monday, when I teach about this, when I share about this principle of rest, people ask, what do you do on your day off? Ask, what is it that you do on your Sabbath? And here's my answer. (laughs) That's the wrong question. It's not what do I do, it's what do I not do. And I don't do anything associated with work on Mondays. I don't strategize, I don't study, I don't create. I expect a strong amen right here. I don't answer emails or text messages. Listen. Do you realize that we could have had a six-day week? Think about that. Where did this seven-day week come from? It came from God. I said it already. He could have worked six days and then just started all over again. But he takes a day off to what? To breathe in. And he gives us a day off. He gives you and me a day off. And well, if you don't take it, or you're not taking it, it says more about you than it says about God. What it really says is that you don't trust God. That you don't trust him. That's it. It's the only reason that you would not rest. So, begin to rest. New song. Begin to rest. And don't ever go in debt again with your time. And with your energy. It's a great principle. Isn't it a great principle? It's a great promise. Man. I mean, it's so good and it's so important that it made God's top ten list. It's a blessing. It's a gift from God to get to rest one day a week. Yes? Yes? All right. Now, if you're like me, if hearing this today... Um, Maybe you're hearing this for the first time, maybe the first time in a long time. Maybe you got convicted, it got awfully quiet in here. All right, so um, maybe you would say, I've been been working seven days a week without a rest. I've been plowing into the margins. I've not been letting my body rest. I've not been letting my mind rest. We need to let our bodies rest, but we also need to give our minds time to rest. I've not been stopping to, to breathe in. So I'm asking you to do something about it. That's the action this week. Do something about it. Start this week. Take a day off. I'm going to invite the band back up to the stage. As the band is coming, I want to thank you for being here this morning. Say happy Mother's Day again to our moms. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes all around this room. I just want us to take a moment before we're done and out of here. Everyone, everyone in the room, everyone watching, take a moment. And I usually, you know, I usually ask you to ask the Holy Spirit to show you what he's speaking to you. But I know what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us this morning. And he might have something specific or, or direct something to you personally. I understand that. But here's what I want you to do. I want, you, I want everyone here to make a commitment. I want you to tell him. I want you to tell the Lord, Lord, to the best of my ability, I'm going to honor the Sabbath. Pray a prayer like that right now in your own heart. Lord, to the best of my ability, to the best I understand, I'm going to start to take a day of rest. I'm going to start, God, Holy Spirit, show me, teach me what it means this week to breathe in. I want to honor the Sabbath and receive this gift that you've given me. And, and, And it goes deeper than that. It goes deeper than just I'm going to rest one day a week or I'm going to take a day off. This is the Word of God. This is spiritual. This is a promise that has the blessing of God attached to it for our benefit. So I just want you to make a commitment right now. Pray something like this. To the best of my ability, Lord, please help me. That's a great prayer. God, I want to do this. I want to follow you in this. Help me because you know me. That's one of the best prayers you can pray. I'm going to try, Lord. Help me. And I just want you to take a moment right now before we sing. 
Say, Lord, I'm going to honor the Sabbath. And as you say that, and as you make that commitment, and as you keep that commitment this week, and as you continue to pray that prayer, Lord, I want to honor you. I want to honor the Sabbath. I want to receive that gift of rest. I want to be refreshed in you. I'm going to trust. I'm going to put my trust in you, God, for your supernatural provision. I'm going to let you use this as a sign in my life. As you do that, as you pray that prayer this week, I believe God will begin to, the Holy Spirit will begin to show you what day. Maybe those are some of the things you're wondering right now. But I believe as you begin to make this commitment and you begin to pray this prayer, God will show you what day. He'll show you when to do it. He'll show you how to do it. God will show you. Lord, right now, I pray for those that are here today. I pray for all our moms. I pray for all our dads. I pray for our women, our men, our old, our young. I pray for our youth and our students that are in the room today, God. I pray for our relationships. I pray for our marriages. God, I pray that we will honor all ten of the commandments including <laughs> that we will honor you in honoring the Sabbath. In Jesus' name, amen.